Hi everyone, Esper Automobile here. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the common rail direct injection system. Now, various companies use different acronyms for their technology due to some patent related issues. However, in this video, we will stick up with the mostly used acronym CRDI. In this episode, we will learn about the history, working principle, components, advantages and disadvantages of CRDI and many more. Thereafter, it is requested that you have to stay with us until the end of this video to learn about one of the most important and exciting technology of present automotive industry. We have also made a video on MPFI system which you can check by clicking the i button above and if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to Aspire automobile so without getting any further delayed let's start now the first question appears what is crdi basically it is a direct fuel injection system designed specifically for diesel engines featuring a high pressure fuel rail feeding solenoid valves as opposed to a low pressure fuel pump feeding unit injectors which was used in earlier diesel engines. The CRDI system can generate fuel pressure over 2000 bar. Now in contrast to conventional systems that build up pressure for each injector individually. Common rail systems decouples the fuel pressure generation from the actual fuel injection process which extends the latitude available for shaping the injection and combustion process individually, resulting in optimal combustion under all condition. Now let us discuss about the history of the CRDI system. The common rail system prototype was developed in the late 1960s by Robert Huber of Switzerland and the technology was further developed by Dr. Marco Ganser at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, later of Ganser Hydromac AG which was established in 1995 in Obergeri. Now you can see a Volvo truck on your screen which used an earlier version of the CRDI system. The first successful use in a production vehicle began in Japan by the mid-1990s. Dr. Sohi Ito and Masahiko Miyaki of the Denso Corporation, which is a Japanese automotive parts manufacturer, developed the common rail fuel system for heavy-duty vehicles and turned it into practical use on their ECD U2 common rail system mounted on the Hino Ranger truck, which you can see right now on a screen and sold for general use in 1995. Denso claims the first commercial high pressure common rail system in 1995. Modern common rail systems, although working on the same principle, are governed by an electronic control unit or ECU, which opens each injector electrically rather than mechanically. This was extensively prototyped in the 1990s with the collaboration between Magneti Marelli, Centro Fiat and Elesis. After research and development by the Fiat Group, the design was acquired by the German company Robert Bosch for completion of the development and refinement for mass production. In hindsight, the sale appeared to be a strategic error for Fiat as the new technology proved to be highly profitable. The company had little choice but to sell Bosch a license, as it was in a poor financial state at the time and lacked the resources to complete development on its own. In 1997, they extended its use for passenger cars. The first passenger car to use the common rail system was the 1997 model Alfa Romeo 156 2.4 liter JTD which right now you can see on your screen. Later the same year, Mercedes-Benz produced it in their W202 model. Now let us discuss about the working principle of the CRDI system.
but before starting that watch a thing very carefully there are three types of fuel lining indicated right now on your screen the high pressure lining is indicated in red color the low pressure fuel lining is indicated in the yellow color and the unfiltered fuel lining from the fuel tank to the fuel filter is indicated in the brown color so let us start the principle first of all a high pressure accumulator element which is also known as the common rail is mounted along the engine block this rail is fed by a high pressure fuel pump this common rail feeds all the injectors on the engine the injectors themselves are activated by the solenoid valves the solenoid valves and the fuel pump are electronically controlled thus the common rail serves as a high pressure reservoir where the injection pressure is independent of the engine speed and load due to which the injection parameters can be freely controlled this complete process is controlled by the ecu in brief this complete process can be understood by some small steps first unfiltered fuel from the fuel tank enters inside the fuel filter from the fuel filter this unfiltered fuel is sent to the high pressure fuel pump in third step high pressure pump sends this pressurized fuel to the common rail from the common rail this pressurized fuel is distributed to the injectors which in turn inject the fuel in corresponding combustion chambers pressure limiter valve or the plv sends back any excess fuel back to the fuel tank for reuse now we will discuss about the components of the crdi system major components of the crdi system are common rail electronic control unit or the ecu injectors high pressure fuel pump fuel tank and fuel filter pressure limiter valve or the plv sensors and actuators and fuel linings the elaborated crdi system with pointed out components which you can see right now on a screen is edc bs4 system of tata motors which they use in their commercial vehicles so the first component is the common rail the term common rail refers to the fact that all of the fuel injectors are supplied by a common fuel rail which is nothing more than a pressure accumulator where the fuel is stored at high pressure this accumulator supplies multiple fuel injectors with high pressure fuel this simplifies the purpose of the high pressure pump in that it only needs to maintain a target pressure the common rail is controlled by the electronic control unit rail pressure sensor and the pressure limiter valve the second component is the electronic control unit or ecu sometimes it is also called as the engine control module or ecm now imagine it as the brain of the complete crdi system it is basically a control unit that controls a series of actuators on an internal combustion engine to ensure optimal engine performance in all conditions it does this by reading values from a multitude of sensors within the engine bay interpreting the data using multidimensional performance maps and adjusting the engine actuators now before ecus air fuel mixture ignition timing and idle speed were mechanically set and dynamically controlled by the mechanical and pneumatic means the third component is the high pressure pump imagine it as the heart of the complete crdi system it delivers the fuel into the connected rail under high pressure it consists of one or two high pressure elements each integrated in a housing with its own camshaft the pump camshaft is driven by the bells chains or cog wheels and moves the pump pistons to generate the required high pressure fourth component is the fuel injector now depending upon the type of the nozzle fuel injector can be broadly classified into four types single hole multi hole 
spindle and pintox when signaled by the ecu the high speed solenoid control fuel injector opens and sprays the pressurized fuel into the combustion chamber the duration that the injector is open is proportional to the amount of the fuel delivered this duration is known as the pulse width there are two more factors affecting the actual flow of the fuel first one is the injector nozzle spray aperture and the second one is the rail pressure next component is the sensor now to understand sensor we have to compare it with one of the most vital organ of human body the nerve nerve is basically an enclosed bundle of fiber which transmit electrical impulses if any abnormality in the body is sensed by the sensory nerve it sends a signal to the brain through the central nervous system the brain acts after receiving that signal sensors just like the nerves sense any change in the surrounding environment of the vehicle and send this data to the ecu to evaluate so that an efficient engine management can be achieved in this episode we will be discussing about eight basic sensors which are used in crdi system these sensors are crankshaft position sensor camshaft position sensor rail pressure sensor fuel temperature sensor manifold absolute pressure sensor coolant temperature sensor boost pressure sensor and accelerator pedal sensor so the first sensor is the crankshaft position sensor basically it is an electronic device used in an internal combustion engine it is used to monitor the position or rotational speed of the crankshaft this information is used by the electronic control unit to control the fuel injection or the ignition system timing and other engine parameters the next sensor is the camshaft position sensor now optimum engine control is based on current exact information from the powertrain this information is provided by various sensors the ecu or the electronic control unit uses the camshaft position sensor to record the exact position of the camshaft this increases power and supports emission reduction at the same time the next sensor is the common rail pressure sensor also known as the rps it is located on the fuel rail or the common rail its function is to monitor the fuel pressure in the common rail this sensor is used by the ecu as the part of the calculation for the percentage duty cycle applied to the fuel pressure limiter valve next sensor is the fuel temperature sensor also known as the fts it is designed to measure the temperature of a vehicle's fuel and relay this information to the engine control unit or electronic control unit both are same so it can optimize the air to fuel mix ratio depending on what the fuel temperature is with respect to the intake air temperature the sensor enables the vehicle to run at maximum efficiency based on temperature the more optimized the combustion process is the less pollutants that are emitted via the exhaust system the next sensor is the manifold absolute pressure sensor also known as the map it provides instantaneous manifold pressure information to the engine's electronic control unit or the ecu this data is used to calculate air density and determine the engine's air mass flow rate which in turn determines the required fuel metering for optimum combustion and influence the advance or retard of the ignition timing the next sensor is very much important regarding the performance of the engine it is the coolant temperature sensor or the cts it is also known as the coolant temperature switch it is used to monitor the temperature of the engine's coolant most coolant temperature sensors operate using electrical resistance to measure the temperature of the coolant thus by recording this temperature it can maintain the optimal performance of the engine under all conditions it is located 
in the coolant pipe. The next sensor is the BPS or the boost pressure sensor. It is a part of a turbocharged engine which measures and regulates the air pressure in the intake manifold and controls the boost level of the engine. A boost pressure sensor monitors the speed and airflow pressure in the intake manifold and ensures that the engine remains at its optimum level and is receiving the ideal air and fuel supply. A turbocharged engine without a boost pressure sensor will generate enough power that it will get damaged due to a high temperature. The boost pressure sensor or BPS can be found inside the intake pipe near the throttle valve. The last sensor for today's discussion is the accelerator pedal sensor or the APS. This sensor registers the movement and the position of the accelerator pedal and from this information the electronic control unit or the ECU calculates the required torque for the engine. Next component is pressure limiter valve. The pressure limiter valve sets the system pressure supplied by the electronic control unit in the common rail. It reduces the system pressure in case of overload and thus protects the other components from damage. It sends back excess amount of fuel back to the fuel tank for reuse. Now we will discuss about two of our last components. First of all, we will discuss about the fuel filter. Basically, it is a filter in the fuel line that screens out dirt and rust particles from the fuel, normally made into cartridges containing a filter paper. They are found in most internal combustion engines. Fuel filters serve a vital function in today's modern tight tolerance engine fuel systems. Unfiltered fuel may contain several kinds of contamination, for example, paint chips and dirt that has been knocked into the tank while filling or rust caused by moisture in a steel tank. If these substances are not removed before the fuel enters the system, they will cause rapid wear and failure of the fuel pump and injectors due to the abrasive action of the particles on high precision components used in modern injection systems. Fuel filters also improve performance as the fewer contaminants present in the fuel, the more efficiently it can be burnt. The next and the last component is the fuel tank. It is a safe container for the flammable fluids. Though any storage tank for fuel may be so called, the term is typically applied to part of an engine system in which the fuel is stored and propelled or released into an engine. The maximum distance a combustion engine powered car with a full tank can cover is the product of the tank capacity and its fuel efficiency. So let's discuss about the advantages and the disadvantages of CRDI system. For the advantages, first of all, due to the higher pressure of the fuel injector, the noise of the injection process and the vibration of it, which was a critical problem in earlier diesel vehicles, are now reduced. Now as the pressure generation has been separated from the actual fuel injection process, CRDI system is now able to provide optimum performance with significant reduction in smoke, particulate and exhaust generation. This is the second advantage. And also, due to the complete combustion of fuel under high pressure inside combustion chamber, the fuel economy is increased. The fourth advantage is due to the cause that complete injection process is controlled by the ECU or electronic control unit and does not depend on the load. Higher power output is achievable even at lower RPM due to this reason. As for disadvantages, first of all, this system contains more electrical parts and many sensitive equipments due to which the initial cost is much higher. The second disadvantage is that the condition of the sensor has to be checked periodically also. Otherwise, it may also affect the engine and later on may seize it completely. That's it for today. If you have stayed this long, 
I am sure you have liked this video. If you are new to the channel, do subscribe to Aspire Automobile and do share this video with your friends. It's only your support which keeps the channel growing. Goodbye. See you again.